Hallelujah, hallelujah. Greetings to the City of Joy family, the City of Joy nation, our VIPs, partners, guests, and friends in the DMV, across this country, and around the entire world. I want you to know that I am in harmony with the psalmist who cried. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. And since he has allowed me to come today, I'm going to say to you what the psalmist writer said. He says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. I don't know about you, but I, I took a pause early this morning. And I began to think about the benefits of the Lord. When I look back over my life, and I begin to think some things over, the first thing I think about, hallelujah, 79 years ago, my mother didn't abort me. Hallelujah. It could have been. She didn't abort me. That's a benefit. Because the Lord allowed me to be birthed into the face of this earth. He allowed me to lay down last night. And when I woke up early this morning, clothed in my right mind, that's a benefit. We allowed me to put one feet ahead of the other and make my way to the bathroom. That's a benefit. When I looked into the mirror and I recognized myself, I, that means I was clothed in my right mind. That's a benefit. When I started to brush my teeth with my toothbrush and not my hairbrush, that's a benefit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. And forget not all of his benefits. When you look back, there's some benefit. He woke you up this morning, started you on your way, allowed you to come into the house. That's a benefit. Hallelujah. 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 That you still in the land of the living, that's a benefit. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord God of Israel from everlasting to everlasting and let all the people say amen. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. He is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Make a joyful noise. Make a joyful noise. All you land. Serve him with gladness. Hallelujah. Come before his presence with singing. Be thankful to him and bless his name. Be thankful to him and bless his name. Because he's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. I say he's worthy. He's worthy. Make a job for God. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Hey, hallelujah. Make a job for God. Open your mouth. Make a job for God. Under all you men, everybody, everywhere, make a job. He's worthy. 
four seconds if you don't pass. Just open it up your mouth and give it some praise.
party. On the behalf of the City of Joy, I stand this morning to welcome each and every one of you. Those who are online for the first time and those who's online every Sunday, we open up our heart and our mind and our soul to thank you for tuning in. You could be on another line or somewhere else, but we, the City of Joy, thank you for your presence, your anointing, and your power. Whatever it is that you need, and we can do anything for you. If it's a word of encouragement, if it's a prayer, just let us know. We just a step away. And I want to say, God loves you. The City of Joy loves you as well. God bless you. That is meaningful blessings smile down upon you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Our tithes and our offering, but really, it's a continuation of worship service. Amen. We are to worship God in the beauty of holiness. Yes. And so when it comes to our tithes and our offering, that should be beauty. That should be joy. Because if we just take a little time and think about it, the fact that you're still here in the land of the living, it means that God has been good to you. He has given you your life, your health, and your strength. It didn't have to be that way because some of us this year have lost loved ones. They've gone on, and we are still here. So out of gratitude and the goodness of God, we ought to be glad to offer up our tithes. Amen? We ought to be glad that he has blessed some of us with a heart and a mind to give him his 10% and then offer him for his house additional funds. Some of us ought to be glad that in the time of trouble, when the church is in trouble, when the pastor is in trouble financially, Regardless of how we got where we are, we are here. But God, if you bring your tithes and offering, everything that need to be fixed will be fixed in due time. Amen. Amen. Don't get caught up. Keep your focus on the promise of God. He has promised us to bring that if we bring our tithes and offering to his house that our house will be blessed. Amen. I, I, I believe our pastor is saying, saying that the city of joy the city of joy's house stand in the need of us going a little bit deeper amen you don't have to even like the pastor amen you don't even have to like the first family amen don't lose your focus keep your focus on the promise of God. He commanded us to bring our tithes and our offering. And if you have a heart and a mind to assist the first family, do it because of the promises of God. Do it because you're going to keep your focus on what God has said. He says if you do it, 
I will position you where you will receive abundant blessings. I'll open up the windows of heaven and I'll pour it out. He says, if you do it, press it together, have it running over, just shake. That's, that's, that's a blessing. Amen. Keep your focus on the commandment, the brain, your tithes and off. And then focus on what he has already said he would do, that he will bless us beyond what we can see or imagine. And your blessing don't always have to come back to you. Your children and your children, children. That auntie, that uncle, that niece, that nephew. That they're still alive, doing as well as they are. That's because of the goodness of God. Amen. We're going to ask DIT Hub to come and bless the tithes and offering in advance. Amen. And we're going to thank you in advance for your spirit of generosity that we know exists in the city of joy. And to those in virtual land, our partners and our VIPs, we thank you in advance. DIT Hub. Just we come, Lord God, thanking you for the messenger. First Samuel talked about we shall overcome. And God gonna give us all back what we long. So dig where you never dig before. Amen. Give where you never gave before. And God will return it more than ever. We thank you, Lord God, for the ones who've given. And the ones who have the heart to give, who just don't have it. We thank you, Lord God, for this morning. This is the morning that God has given us one more time to show up and show out. No matter how hard things may seem, continue to bless Jesus and he will come down and send you a blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, DIT Hub. Now, our trustees have provided for three ways for you to give. You should see that on your screen to those in virtual land. You should see that as I speak. There are three ways. The first way is through the Cash App. Those who are members, you can give your tithes and your offering. But in addition, if we have partners and uh, guests and friends who would like to sow a seed, you can do that through the cash app. The second way is through Giglify. That is a secure and a safe way to give. And the third way is that you can mail it in to Post Office Box 250 in Clinton, Maryland. Amen. Now before we get ready to offer up our tithes and offering, Ask those in the sanctuary if you have your uh, decoration of faith paperwork. I want you to get it as we prepare to read our declaration of faith and giving. Amen. Amen. And those who are in virtual land, you should see it on your screen as I speak. Let us read together. As an act of faith, love, gratitude, and a heart for the house, we bring our tithes and offering from our house and release it into yours. Because I am a generous and consistent giver, the fear of life has been broken and has no power over me. Hallelujah. As I give today, I am believing for health and healing, jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, 
Bills paid off. Checks in the mail. Gifts and surprises and finding money. Thank you, God, for watching over your word to perform it in my life, my family, and my money. You have blessed me to be a blessing and I have more than enough to give so that your vision and purpose for this house may be fulfilled. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give the Lord, give the Lord a hand of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. COJ, we have ushers in the back, and they're coming around to minister to you. Raise your hand, and they will be glad to minister to you. And we also gonna have deacons. Remember uh, the announcement. We have a deacon up front and those in the back for those of you who want to assist the first family. Amen. 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 Keep your focus on the promises of God. Amen. thing that he desires is that you and I would please him. So now when we look at the Bible, we look and see things that God put in place so that spiritual beings with the soul who are in an earth suit will have the ability to please their maker. Y'all gonna catch this in about two more minutes. Now we look at the Bible differently. The Bible is not just a book for stuff you can quote. The Bible is not just a book for you to hold under your arm and fall down. The Bible is a book for people who recognize that your spirit with the soul, which is the most important part of you, that has an earth suit, has to use what the master put in the book if we want to please God. Are y'all hearing me? So God desires for us to please him. So that means if he desires us to please him, it's possible to be in church all your life and don't please God. Because you're doing stuff, but there's no faith. Because the one thing that we just read that matters to him is faith. And it says in the the Amplified, without faith, you can't even walk with him. Without faith, you can not only not please him, but you can't even walk with him. And I want to talk a little bit today, ladies and gentlemen, to those around the world, because the question I want to raise, if we as believers who've been bought by God are supposed to be in alignment with God, it has to be through what pleases him and not what pleases us. Because when you talk about God, you talk about what pleases you. What I like to do, I like to do this, and I like to do this for the Lord. I like to do that. And the question and the challenge with you, if it's not in the book that that pleases God, then no matter what you're doing, it's not going to really be blessed because without faith, it's impossible to please God. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And so when it talks about pleasing God, it's not about what you think pleasing God looks like. It's about what God put in the book because we're spiritual beings with the soul. We've been given an earth suit that we got to give up when we got to leave here. And the only thing that goes beyond the grave is what he made before you had the body, which is your spirit with a soul. And so now, pastor, I'm understanding when I'm in a setting like this to hear the word of God, I have to make sure I mix faith with what I hear. Because I don't care how much word is poured on to me. If I'm not mixing faith with what I'm hearing, listen, people of God, it won't work. You can listen to 50 sermons a day. You can go to 50 Bible studies a week. You can read 50 million books, listen to 20 million pastors. But if you don't mix faith with what you heard, it will be of no effect. And then the next problem that we have with people 
who are in church is that many times because we don't spend time in the word and understand what he's made available, we blame people for why we're not working. If my husband was better, I'd be deeper in the word. And my wife would do right, I would be operating more in the things of the spirit. If the people in my group would be more focused, then I would, would, wouldn't be operating in a carnal way. If I had more support around me, I'd be more spiritual. No, no, no. Because this thing is, is individual, which means that if you get in the word, understand faith, the Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please God. If your husband don't have it, that won't stop you from having it. If your children won't have it, that won't stop you from having it. If the people on your ministry don't have it, that won't stop you from having it. If ministers close to you don't have it, that will not stop you from having it. If everybody on your block, in your hood don't have it, that has nothing to do with you. Because as long as you understand faith, and when you hear a word, don't just say that sounds good. Oh, that's a good word. That's a God, that's a black. No, if you don't mix it with faith, it will never manifest nothing in your life. Go to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 2. Are you with me here? Because if you're going to have a working faith, everybody has a faith, but just because you have a faith, it doesn't mean it's working. Just because you got a car at home don't mean it runs. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Look at Hebrews chapter 4, verse 2. We love the word here. You need to write this down. Amplified, it says, for indeed we have had the good news of salvation preached to us. Just as the Israelites also, when the good news of the promised land came to them, but the, the message they heard, listen to this, did not benefit them because it was not united with faith in God by those who did what? Who heard. So being in church hearing the word doesn't mandate you're going to be blessed. Being in an environment where the word goes forth is only one step. Somebody say one step. If you're online, go hashtag OS, one step. Because that's one step. The next step after you hear the word, you got to mix your faith with the word you just heard. Let, 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 let me bring it home. Somebody connected you and say, you know, I got to go to the gym. Because I got to start getting on the treadmill. I got to change my diet plan. Uh, uh, CG, I got to increase my water intake. Uh-huh. And, and I got to get to the treadmill because I, I want to lose weight. I, I want to get more fit. I, I want to get more firm in some areas. I want to work on some things, so, so I got to get to the gym. And so that person who talks to you about it, will talking about it change them? They have to go from talking about going to the gym to actually going to the gym, getting a membership in the gym. Talk to me, somebody. Uh, or they have to go and purchase a treadmill, bring it to their house. Talk to me, somebody. Find something on YouTube to watch to motivate them so they can get on, uh, get, get on the equipment because equipment that you don't use don't bring no results. Teach, Pastor T. Equipment that you just talk about don't bring no results. It's only equipment that you use that bring results. So if you got faith and don't use it, that's the reason you don't see results. The Bible is filled with equipment for believers to bring results, manifestation, and harvest in their life. But as we heard, hearing the word is only one part. You got to go and get membership to the gym. You got to get a treadmill at your house. You got to go start, you got to start drinking more water, less soda. You got to change your diet plan if you're going to get those results. Why do we think just hearing the word is enough and we don't apply on the other side the things we need to do to get the results from God. Look at somebody say, I need results. And the problem that God has with us, he has given you and I the authority. 
to arrest the activity of the devil in our life. The problem that God has with us, he's given us authority to the arrest the activity of the devil in our families, in our home, in our money, and even in our bodies, if you could ever mix faith with what you hear. You don't know when to shout. Because you're getting what you need, but maybe the problem is not other people. You're not mixing faith. And if you don't mix faith with it, you're not going to please God and God won't bless it. Who am I talking to right now? That's why if you have a little bit of money and not enough money, if you mix faith with the little bit and pray over it and give God thanks, no complaints, no mixed spirit, no level, no sins of unbelief, God will manifest greatness. But if you have unbelief when you pray, unbelief when your bills keep going and your money run out, I promise you won't see manifestation. God will let you suffer while he looks because he gave you a treadmill that you don't use. He gave you a plan that you're not working. He gave you a layout what to get you to where you need to go, but the problem is you're not doing your part. So when I hear the word of God, I, I have to do more. I, I'm in this environment. Okay, I'm getting the word of God. What do I need to do? Well, once I leave this environment, I got to meditate on what I heard. Think about naturally what happens when you eat. When you go somewhere to eat some food, the food does not become a part of your body at the moment. When you're going somewhere to dine, whether it's uh, seafood or any food, or vegetarian, pescatarian, when you eat food, it don't become a part of you. The first thing you have to do when you're eating, watch this, is you have to process it and you have to break it down. Am I helping anybody right now? The first thing you got to do is process it. You got to break it down because the form it is in is not the form that you can digest. Once you start di uh, breaking the food down, watch this, in your mouth, then it leaves your mouth, catch me y'all, and start traveling down your intestines. Lord, I wish I had a real church in here. When the food travels down my intestines, something amazing happens. The part that I don't need, my body gets away. The part that I need, watch this, at that moment becomes a part of me. It is at the moment where the food goes through the intestines that the food has become a part of me. Before it goes through the intestines, you just ate. After it goes through the intestines, then that food no longer just becomes food, but the nutrients out of the food that you ate has become a permanent part of your body. Can I teach like I feel it? When you come to church and you hear the word, when you leave here, baby, you got to meditate. When you meditate, it is breaking down the forms so you can process it. It is once the food, spiritual food, goes through you after you break it down, do it become a permanent part of who you are. Some people just come to church and they leave the word right in their pew. They leave the message, they leave the points, they leave scripture. So if you're leaving all that here, what are you meditating on? Some people want the feeling, but they don't want the substance. Because the substance means you got to write something down. Because somewhere during this week, you want to please God. So the word you receive, you didn't quite understand it all. So you got to meditate so the spirit can speak to you. And that which you need for your life, that which you need for your family, that which you need for your marriage, that which you need for your ministry, it will become a part of your life. So I got to grind that word until it becomes a part of me. Grind it. Write that word down. Grind it. Grind it. Grind it. Now this is important, ladies and gentlemen, because just like you will go out to eat. When I go out to eat and I draw a good meal with leading lady and Lexi, guess what I know? I know when I'm full. Can I get some real folk in the house with me? I, you don't have to tell me I'm full. My stomach tells me that I'm full. Just like it is in the natural. 
So it is in the spiritual. When you get in the word, your spirit will let you know when you meditate that your spiritual man is full. This is no hocus pocus, something you got to guess. When the word of God comes in you and you break it down and he starts ministering what he needs to minister, you will discover that you know it without a shadow of a doubt. That's when, at that point, I can go into the word of God. Now when I go into the word of God, now I'm looking because I get faith, a working faith, Everything that God gave a verdict on, I declare it. Everything he gave a verdict on, I declare it. Financially, I declare it. If he gave a verdict, Philippians 4.19, but my God shall supply all of your needs according not to your bank, but his riches and glory, I declare that because he already made a verdict on it. When your body is sick and under pressure, then I have to go to the word of God of what he's already gave a verdict on. I wish I had people that love the word. Isaiah says, watch this, by his stripes, we're made whole. And so I got to declare that. No matter what's going on, I declare what God has already made a verdict. Who am I teaching right now? See, the problem is, if you don't have a working faith, you read the Bible as a book. But you got to understand if God has given a verdict on it and endorsed it, all I need to do is declare it and believe it. Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Glory be to the name of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Because this whole faith thing works through the unseen. Somebody say the unseen. So 2 Corinthians chapter 4, I want to look at verse 18. We're still under the necessity of faith. I gotta please God. I gotta have it because he says without this one thing, I don't please him. I don't wanna go to church and not please him. I won't put no uh, trustee clothes on and not please him. I mean, if I don't have this one thing, I'm going through the motion, but I'm not pleasing God. If I'm not pleasing God, what am I doing? Second Corinthians chapter four, verse 18. Listen what the Amplified says. So we look not at the things which are seen. Highlight this if you have a highlighter. But at the things which are what? Unseen. For the things which are visible are what? Temporal. Just brief and fleeting. But the words which are invisible are everlasting and imperishable. Now, this is for faith, people. Because faith is not about what it looks like. Faith is about what it will be. Oh, God, y'all didn't read what we just read. If you read what we just read, what you'll understand is your current situation is about to change. Because if you can see it, it's temporal. Faith always go beyond what is seen to the unseen, because through faith, God brings the invisible and makes it visible. Can I teach to some real people? So faith is not about what's going on in your house now. Your faith is about what's getting ready to go on in your new house. Faith is not about the sickness that you've been diagnosed with. Faith is about the healing that you're getting ready to get that your doctor's getting ready to confirm. Look at two people and say, you got to get the faith thing. So if you understand this verse, you got to understand that your right now is getting ready to change into your shall be. Lord, I got to say that one more time. Your right now is getting ready to change into what it shall be. Because if it's right now and you can see it, then that's not what you have faith for. It's already there. You have faith for what you can't see, that God will bring it from the invisible and make it visible. Are you hearing what I'm saying? In other words, baby, let me give you some good news. God is about to turn your Egypt into your promised land. 
the place you don't like going, the stuff you don't like doing, if you have faith, God will turn that into the best place you've ever seen, but you got to believe beyond what you see. Think about the Hebrew boys. You have faith that now you believe that God can turn my fiery furnace into my Caesar's palace. Why? Because the things that are not seen are the things I have to have faith for. If you're going to do great things in 2022, you got to stop stopping at what things look like. Go to Romans chapter 4. I need to show you this. I'm getting excited. Romans chapter 4, verse 21. And I'm going to amplify it. Listen to what it says. Being fully convinced, highlight that, that God had the power to do what he had promised. Highlight had promised. Being fully convinced that God had the power to do what he fully promised. So one, Abraham had to know what he promised. But then Abraham's job was to make sure he's fully convinced. Fully convinced simply means he had faith. God can't do nothing for you until you're fully convinced that he can do it. Can I say that one more time? God can't work that situation out for you, brother, because you're not fully convinced. One moment you're operating in unbelief. One moment you, you're, you're whining. The next moment you're declaring. And so you're wavering between two thoughts, two perspectives, and God can't do that. Matter of fact, James says a double-minded man is unstable and will not receive a favor from God. So Abraham believed God what he promised, and look what God did. Through faith, God took a dead cell fertilized a dead egg, and produced a living Isaac. God took two dead things to produce one live thing. And any person who saw it with their natural eye would have said, it's no way it could be done. Whenever you reach, it's a no way, priest, pastor, that could be done, it's a perfect opportunity for faith to show up. Because faith believes in the invisible. Faith believes beyond the circumstances. Faith believes beyond the x-ray. God have mercy. And God gave them a son based upon them being fully convinced. Let me give you point number two. You have to have a knowledge of his character. Write that down. Knowledge of his character. Mm -hmm. After you get through the necessity of faith, you have to have a knowledge of his character. He says, he who cometh to God must believe that he is. He is, he is. Go to Titus chapter 1. Titus chapter 1, that's in the New Testament. Chapter 1, verse number 2. Bless the word of God. And I want to show you, ladies and gentlemen, that when you go into God's word, you got to know his character. If you don't know his character, then you're not going to follow him, nor will you do what you're supposed to do to get the manifestation. Titus 1 and 2, Amplified, listen to what it says. Based on the hope and divine guarantee of eternal life, the life which God, who is ever truthful and without deceit, promised before the ages of time began. In other words, Titus 1 and 2 says, listen, God cannot lie. We have hope that we're going to have eternal life and go to heaven simply because God said it. God cannot lie. Just like a man cannot be pregnant. God cannot lie. If God says in the word he took our sins, he took our sins. If God said he's perfecting you, 
Listen, ladies and gentlemen, he's perfect. I don't care if you drink. I don't care if you smoke. I don't care if you date the wrong people. If God says he's perfecting you, he's perfecting you. I don't care what your struggles may be. I don't care what your addictions are. If God says he's perfecting you, he's perfecting you. Because whatever he says, it is impossible for God to lie. If God says he's going to supply your every need, now I'm talking to 50 people who got faith. If God says he's going to supply it, then God is going to supply it. I don't care what it looks like because God cannot lie. Repeat after me, God cannot lie. Glory to God. You got to get this. You got to get that. I don't care if people have lied to you, if people in your house have lied to you, if people on your job has lied to you. It is impossible for God to lie. Go to Hebrews chapter 6. I got to give this to you. I got to give this to you because if you're going to have a work in faith, you got to know this. You got to leave the people who just go through church stuff as a routine. They miss blessings because they're doing stuff, but they're not mixing faith with what they're doing. And when they don't mix faith, number one, they don't please God. God can't bless the way he wants to because in order to bless you, you got to first please him. Hebrews 6, 18, look what it says. So that by two unchangeable things, his promise and his oath, I like that, in which it is impossible for God to do what? lie. We who have fled to him for refuge would have strong encouragement and indwelling strength to hold tightly to the hope set before us. Pastor, what does this mean? This means that God cannot lie. We have to make God our sufficiency in order for our insufficiency to stop. God is our eternal sufficient. He's not just for you now to do stuff now, but he's the power that's going to go from now. Even when we leave here, he's going to remain sufficient for us. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Once you understand God, you understand you never need anything plus God. You might meet people, but say, hey, I don't need you as God in my life. I got a God. I can't have two gods because can't nobody compare to that God. No matter what they do for you, no matter how much they can give to you, tell them I don't need God plus nothing. People of God, I want to give you a word today that if you get this word, ladies and gentlemen, you are able to take things from the enemy. Because the devil don't mind you coming to church, but he don't want you to get keys. If you get this, you get keys. You can start commanding some things to happen that it don't even look like going to happen. Because now you understand faith ain't about the house I already have. Faith is not about the car I already have. Faith is not about the money I already got in the bank. Faith is about that which is invisible now, but God is going to bring it from the invisible If you get this word, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands up right now. God told me to tell you, whatever is dead in your life, God is getting ready to make it past tense. Whatever's dead, he's about to make it past tense. He could take a dead cell and a dead egg and produce a living Isaac. He can take something that died in your life and produce a harvest and a blessing like you've never seen before. So, so, so now catch this, people of God. So now, watch this. Since I have to know the character of God, if I'm going to have faith and I'm coming after God, listen to what he says, i got to believe that he is. So the question, Pastor, is what is he? you got to believe he is. And you know, church time, we say stuff, but we don't have understanding of what we're saying. So if you don't understand it, you're not going to get a benefit or a result or a manifestation or a harvest. So when he says, when I come to God because of his character, because your character is not what you want people to think about you. Your character is who you are. So I'm not going to God by what people have told me, priest pastor. I'm going to God about his true character. And so when you read the Bible to discover his true character, what is he? 
Let me share with you the easiest way to explain what he is. God is greater than anything you can face. I'm about to jump over this pulpit right now. That means no matter what mountain is in front of you, God is greater. Whatever river that you got to cross, God is greater. Whatever deficit you're going through, God is greater. Whatever money you need for college, God is greater. Whatever you need to get your own transportation and get your independence, God is greater. Whatever you need to fulfill the calling on your life, God is greater. You went to the doctor, they say you got cancer. They say they saw a couple lumps. You got to look at that doctor and say, God is greater. Because the only reason I'm going to go to him, if I don't think he's greater, I'm not going to him. If I think the circumstances are bigger than him, I'm not going to him. So the reason I keep going to him is because I believe he's greater than whatever. Can I find somebody to give God some praise? Because God is greater. So what happens, what happens, people of God, I got to give this to you, I got to give this to you. What happens in our life is that whenever God gives you a word, the next thing you go through will be a season of contradictions. That will make it look like you didn't get nothing from God. Whenever God gives you a word, Expect to go through a season of contradictions that look counter to whatever God told you. It'll always be a season of contradiction where the thing that God spoke to you, it don't look like it's going to manifest. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Dolly Parton said it this way. She said, if you want the rainbow, you got to put up with the rain. Because before you get what God has, there will always be a season of contradiction. Can I talk to somebody? You in a situation and circumstance right now is a season of contradiction. It doesn't look good, but God told me to tell you, keep doing what God told you to do. Even in your health, it looks like it's getting worse. Baby, you are in a season of contradiction. Every morning when you get up, say, by his stripes. Say, he was wounded for my transgressions, bruised for my iniquity. I believe I'm already healed. And what the devil don't want you to know is that the season of contradiction is his last chance to knock you off the boat. Because if you stay on the boat, the thing that God told you was getting ready to happen is the next boat coming off. Look at somebody and say, stay on the boat. Don't let nothing knock you off the boat. Because when God gives you a word, you will go through a circumstance that looks count. When he's going to raise you up on your job, you're going to hit a storm on your job to make it look like a promotion is nowhere in sight. Glory to God. Grab your pen. Let me give you this last one and I got to be done. So I got to know his character. The reason I go, he's greater. He's greater than your storms. He's greater than your children issues. He's greater than your educational stuff. He's greater than your job issues. I know you got relationship issues. He's greater than that. I know you got creditors calling you. He's greater than the creditors. I know you have some questions in life that you don't have answers. He's greater than that. You're trying to figure life out, but you say, I got so many missing pieces, Pastor, to what I'm trying to do. He's greater than the missing pieces of your life. You had somebody who was there and they walked out. Can I give you some good news? He's greater than anybody who will ever walk out on you. But you're not going to come to him 
unless you believe he's greater. You might look crazy, but you got to show him. See, I believe crazy is what faith looks like. If you always trying to stay in the safety net, that means your faith is not operable. Faith will have you talking crazy, looking crazy, sounding crazy, and you'll even act crazy. Talking about I'm gonna build the ark, it's gonna rain. Ain't nobody ever seen a raindrop you building something. Let me give you point three and we're done. The last thing you gotta understand, in order to have a working faith, you have to have a never-ending love. Online, hashtag N-E-L, never-ending love. Notice what he says, Minister Fleur. He says, he that cometh to God must believe that he is. Catch this, he's a rewarder, listen, to them that diligently seek him. Now, I'm not talking about going out to God because you want a man. Going to God because you want to be married. I'm not talking about going to God because you want a house. This faith thing at this point, this is not about stuff. This is not about a position. This faith thing, listen to me people, people of God, it is going after God for God. It is going after God simply because of who he is. You're going to get this in a minute. I'm going after him because I got a never-ending love with him. Not the stuff, not the gift he brings, but who he is. That's why when he says, you, those who diligently seek after him, notice what it don't say. It doesn't say for a season. For a certain point in their life where they can't go for a career, they don't have energy to go party. No, he doesn't talk for a certain specified time because he's not talking about people just doing it to get something. He says, these are people who come after me, catch this people of God, regardless of what they're in. You need to write that down. People who go after God, regardless of what condition, what state, what circumstance, what ordeal they are in, in the current moment. This one thing called faith, can not only get me free, but it can get me in the flow of God and in the favor of God because I'm going after him consistently. I need you to get that, people of God. If you miss that, you don't understand faith. Now watch this. The last part of the verse says this. It says, and reward them that diligently seeks him. Now, he uses words before diligently seek, but in reality, rewards come after. He says, reward them. Who are them? Them are those who go after God. So he says, if you come after me, there will be rewards. I'm going to say that again, and you need to write this down. He says, if you come after me, there will be rewards. So rewards are answers to what you need. Rewards are finances. It is health. They're opportunities. It's favor. It's buildings. It's people. It's networks to what you need to accomplish what you're doing. 
but rewards does not come first. What comes first, watch this, is to diligently seek after God. You won't catch this in a minute. Rewards does not come first. I'm not going to God for rewards. I'm going to God for him. People around the world, I need you to get this because if you get this, God is going to enlarge your testimony. Faith goes after God, not rewards. Because with God, he wants you to go for fellowship and he'll take care of fulfillment later. Don't go to God for fulfillment. Go to God for fellowship because you love God. Go to God because you want to be with God. Go to God because you want to get in God's heart. Go to God because you want to know what makes him happy. Go to God because you want to please him because when you please him, you get joy out of seeing your God happy. And when you go for fellowship, then he provides the fulfillment. But when you go for fulfillment, many times you don't get it because while you're looking for fulfillment, your God wants his children to fellowship with him. Don't just run to me for $20. Don't just run to me to pay your bill. Don't just run to me because you got surgery. But he says, I just want you to spend time because when you spend time with your daddy, then I have no problem giving you the fulfillment of what you need. Because faith is not about stuff, it's about him. Because he that cometh to God must believe in his character, that he's greater than any circumstance. But I go to him because I love him. I go to him because I need him. I go to him because if the breath that I breathe allows me to function, then when I'm closer to him, I feel better than I've ever felt before. That's why praise and worship is not about the people up front. It's an opportunity for us to get close to daddy. Because when we get close to daddy, daddy gives us fulfillment. Praise and worship is about fellowship. God will bless us with the miracle that's fulfillment. Hey, so God can send the Holy Ghost just to rest. And so people who operate in perpetual anointings, if you watch them, Deaconess Turner, they're people who walk in the level of preparation. So tomorrow, while other people are focused on their jobs, their enemies, that particular person will pray in the morning. That pe person may fast a little bit. That person may read the Bible on their lunch break, just getting into the hearing, the voice of God. That's why the Holy Ghost used that sister the way he does, because that sister is prepared. She's not playing the games to be in front of people to make, her, her, it, make it look like she's something that she's not. She's prepared. Whenever you are prepared, prepared people are used in great ways. So, the people of God, grab your pen. Let me give you these things and then we go. He talks about reward after you believe. Stop wanting to get rewards if you don't believe. Get closer to him. He'll pull stuff in. You get close to God, he'll bless you in ways you never see. I don't have time to get deep, but you don't have to jump hoop. You don't have to run around the church. If you get this faith thing, your life will transform in front of everybody who knows you. While other people are working hard, you learn this faith thing. He'll open up doors, favors, and opportunities. He'll take off your career. Your relationship will start to get better. Doors will start to open because now you're mixing faith with what you're hearing. You are properly digesting it so the word that you heard becomes a part of you. Let me give you these things. So when it says diligently seek him, how, how do I diligently seek God? Matthew 6.33 says seek him first and seek him God in his name. That's his path. So when I diligently seek him God, it's not one particular way. Write that down. If I'm talking to leading lady, sometimes when I talk to leading lady, Reverend Doster, sometimes I call on the phone. Shout and John, sometimes I don't call her, I text her. Sometimes I don't text her, I FaceTime her. Sometimes I don't FaceTime her, I write her a phone. Though I'm doing a number of different things, teach best me. I'm still communicating with my wife. 
So when we say diligently going after God, don't leave and say, well, I got to do this, I got to do this. No, 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 no. There are many different ways. One way you communicate with God is through study. Write that down. 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show yourself approved. Work that not need to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of God. Study. So when you go into the word of God, five minutes, ten minutes, two minutes, that's a way of seeking God. God will speak to you while you're studying his word, which talks about the equipment that you got that you don't use. If I'm diligently seeking God, if I'm not studying, another way to, to seek God, we're going to do it this week for those, fasting. Write that down. Joel 2, chapter 2, verse 12, Amplified says, Even now, says the Lord, turn and come to me with all your heart in genuine repentance, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Listen to this. This is going to make you jump up. Until every barrier is removed, and the broken fellowship is restored. Y'all don't know when to shout. So when you go on the fast, it just ain't trying to uh, miss a meal to, to lose two pounds. You're going on the fast because you want your relationship with your heavenly father to get back to where it used to be because something came between you and your daddy. That's why you don't talk to him like you used to. That's why you don't praise like you used to. That's why you don't praise God like you used to because something has come in between your fellowship with God. So when you go on a fast, everything that stands between you and your daddy He'll tear it down. Somebody shout, tear it down. That's another way of seeking God. Next way you can seek God, diligently seek, is through worship. Write that down. John 4, 24, Amplified. God is a spirit. You remember how you were made? You're not an earth suit first, brother. You are spirit with a soul who's been given the earth suit. The greatest part of you is the stuff people can't see. This faith thing takes off in the areas eyes can't see, which is the spiritual man, which is renewed in the things of God day by day. So now, so, so now if God is a spirit, catch this, the way he's going to talk to me is from spirit to spirit. That's where your emails, you know, you know, if you got a phone and you're working, you got to check your emails to see if somebody on the job called you, somebody on the job texts you, you got a new order. Well, that's how it works on your job. When you work with God, you got to check your spirit because if he's going to give you an email, it's going to be spirit to spirit. The quickest way, the purest way that he's going to speak to you is straight from his spirit And the spirit in you, catch this, is the spirit he created. Two more. The second thing that you can do to diligently see God, prayer. Somebody shout prayer. Mark 11 verse 24 says, for this reason I'm telling you, whatever things you ask for in prayer, in accordance with God's will, that means you gotta know his will, his will is his word, and his word is his will. Believe, I like this, with confident trust, that's faith, that you have received them and they will be given to you. Now watch this last one. If you're diligently seeking God, meditation. Meditation. You gotta start learning how to get quiet. Psalms 46.10, be still. I know you like to be on the phone and you gadget crazy, but sometimes you got to let your gadgets go. You got, you got to fast from the gadgets. Talk, Pastor, I'm doing the best I can because you need to hear his voice. Psalms 1 and 2 says, <clears throat> but his delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law his precepts, his teaching, habitually meditate day and night. Listen, when you diligently seek God, not through the flesh, but through the spirit, the devil attacks on your life are after what's in your spirit. 
I'm going to say that one more time. Close your book. I got I to deal with it. And I'm done. The devil's biggest attacks are on your spirit. It's, it's not the outside. It's not the house. It's that which is in you. When Jesus prayed for Peter, he prayed that Peter's faith didn't fail. Because if Peter's faith didn't fail, he can make it through whatever he needed to get through. National Geographic's Mike, I looked at it two days ago, and, and it was talking about the Atlantic Sound. And it talked about their crazy, weird migration system. God had placed in them a global GPS system. And so when salmon get older, they have an instinct, catch this, y'all, to know exactly the place they were born. They have some type of ability when they come up into an obstacle, they'll jump out of the water because they got to get to where they were born because where they were born is where they got to drop the eggs and then soon after that, they die. They're strong. Watch this. They just know where to go. Sometimes Simon will travel 2,000 miles to get to the exact location where the eggs are going to be dropped. When they get closer to where they're going, watch this, they have to deal with one last predator. The predators are called bears who are there waiting, standing between the promise where they're going and the salmon who's trying to get there and they're there with one intent. Watch this. They want to kill the sound. Isn't that something? To work hard all your life to get back to that exact place where eggs got to be laid. But on your way, knowing you're getting ready to die, you got to deal with one last predator. The bears are there with claws, a thousand pounds, 800 pounds, ready to devour the salmon. When, when the bears get the salmon, what we discover, catch this ladies and gentlemen, the bears don't care nothing about the salmon. The bears care about the eggs that the salmon are carrying. The bears say, we don't care about you. We care about the future. Our value is what you've been producing, what God has put on the inside of you is awesome. It is amazing. It is powerful. And we're going to do everything we can to kill what's on the inside. Can I tell you, the devil ain't after you. He's after what God put inside of you. That vision, that purpose, that calling, the thing that God created you to be, every attack that you experience, the devil is after your eggs. Your eggs will affect the future. It'll affect the next generation. It'll affect two, three, four generations down your family's line. You got something in you, that spiritual thing. Oh, you feel it. It has life. But I want you to know while you're going to where you need to go, expect the spiritual bear to show up. The devil is going to come after you, baby, after you, brother, because you're carrying something. The bears will get the salmon. Go into the salmon for the eggs. Throw the rest of the salmon on the ground. Because Reverend Dawson, it was never about the salmon. It was about what they carry. If you carrying something, stand up. I got to say something over your life. Because you've been going through hell over what you've been carrying. <laughs> you've been going through attack. And you're trying to figure, I'm just trying to get to where God wants me to go. I'm just trying to get back so God can use me. I'm just trying to get into place so the anointing can flow out of me and I can be a vessel. But what you don't understand, the devil is always going to be waiting when you get close. And he don't want you. He want what you carry. 
What you're carrying got power. Lift your hands. What you're carrying is anointed. What you're carrying, the devil is going to give everything to destroy what you're carrying before you get where God has anointed you to get. I decree and declare over every believer in this house and online, Facebook, Twitter, that the devil won't get your eggs. He won't get your purpose. He won't destroy your destiny. That you're going to mix faith with what you hear. That this will be, shall be the greatest year you've ever experienced. Because you're going after God. You're going after fellowship with God. God will take care of the fulfillment for your family, fulfillment for your life, fulfillment for your work. God says, but just come after me. I decree and declare every demon that will come after your spiritual eggs to be rebuked and bound by the blood of Jesus. I plead the oil of God over you from your head down to your toes. I decree the word of God over your life in your house, on your job, every area you shall go. The effort that the enemy will put forth will never take none effect because you're covered by the blood of Jesus. You're covered by the oil of the Holy Ghost. And that those areas that have seemed dead like Abraham, they are officially past tense. That that which you have envisioned that God has told you, he's bringing it to pass for his glory, for his honor, Repeat after me, for your glory, for your honor, for your glory, for your honor, I will do your will with my heart, with my soul, with my mind. In the name of Jesus, I give you glory, I give you honor, I give you praise. Come on, beloved, give God a hand to praise and worship him. As you remain on your feet, as the praise team come, there might be a man, woman, boy, or girl. And you say, Pastor, I need to get closer to God. I've come to God out of 911 emergencies in the past. But I'm recognizing that he doesn't want me just to him. But that God wants me to come after him every day. To pursue him with my heart my soul, my mind. I'm to give you an opportunity, whether you are in the sanctuary or you at home in the virtual sanctuary, if you don't know Jesus in this place, I want to give you the opportunity that Jesus went to Calvary's cross for. He died for our sins that we may live. That's why John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever would believe in him would not perish, but have life, even at home. Lift your right hand to the screen, the flat TV. Leave your family, go somewhere. Salvation is personal. If you're in the saints where you don't know him, go through the plan of salvation with me. And when we finish, you will be saved and your spiritual man will be activated to do the things of God. Repeat, Father, I thank you for sending Jesus to the cross to go into the grave and to get up with all power, come into my life with all fullness in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody say amen. If you prayed that prayer, you're saved. It is the start of a lifelong relationship with the lover of your soul. He died for you. He wants to grow with you, and he wants to see you manifested into a growing disciple for Jesus. After you become saved, you need to get a part of a local church. COJ would love to be your church family. I would be honored to be your online pastor. Jesus would love to be your savior, but most of all, the Holy Ghost would love to be your comforter. Right there on the screen, you can see where you can sign up to become a part of our family. The process is simple. 
but it means so much because the Bible says Hebrews 10 around 25 forsake not because we need each other in the things of God you need a family of faith to circle you to encourage you and to love you in the things of God and God bless you in Jesus name let's worship with the praise team y'all One more time, and then we're going to let you go. Oh, my, oh, my. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Have you been blessed today? Yes. Hallelujah. It's so good, COJ, to see you. All of our all standing on your feet at home. Be ready. I give you the honor. Oh, thank you, Lord. I give you the praise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ever and ever. What you gonna do, y'all? I'll give you the If the Lord been good to you If he made a way in a noise Yeah, 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 yeah One more time, even at home I'll give you the If the Lord brought you from a long way to go y'all father we love you we thank you for being kind thank you for being good thank you for allowing us to come together to worship and to honor you we pray your blessings over every worshiper who assemble every worshiper who connect with us on twitter facebook and youtube let this week be filled with blessings financially blessings in our faith let the people we call friends be blessed because of our connection with you we ask oh god that you even bless our future as we walk more in faith than we've ever walked before let us meditate on your word let us chew your word so your word can become a complete part of who we are and father when we come after you it is not for stuff it's because we love you it's because we need you every hour every minute and every second of the day now may the grace of god and the sweet communion of the precious holy spirit rest rule and abide now henceforth and forevermore let every person who love god shout amen when you go through this week your motto for living should be the joy of the Lord. It is our strength. Be blessed. COJ family, COJ nation, and COJ partners all over the world. 
as you're preparing your hearts and your minds to celebrate the Lord's body and celebrate the Lord's blood, I would ask now that you would go to the refrigerator and get out your cracker and your juice as you share with us in our communion every fourth Sunday. The City of Joy family for years have made a commitment that we want to love on God for the sacrifice that was beyond all human sacrifices. Because the Bible says in the Gospel of John chapter 3 verse 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. And as you're joining us from the East Coast, Midwest, West Coast, China, Africa, South America, we want you to join us as we celebrate the Lord's body and the Lord's blood. We do believe that the Word of God has a significance and that's why we start out this time with reading our responsive reading. You should see it on your screen. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 23 through 34. I'll read the light print, you'll read the dark. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we judge, we are chasing of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another all together all over the world. And if and any if man, man hunger, hunger let, let him, him eat, eat at home, home that ye come not, not together, together unto condemnation, condemnation and, and the, the rest, rest will I set in order when I come. Somebody ought to shout amen. amen. We thank God for the reading of God's already blessed word. And as you have your juice and your cracker prepared, we want to ask one of our seasoned deacons, Deacon John Lord Jr., if he would pray a prayer of consecration that will change the communion from its physical form to the spiritual form to reflect the body and blood of the Lord. Let's pray with Deacon John Lord Jr. Let every heart pray. Father God, it's in the name of Jesus we come before you. Father God, our desire is to commune with you, to fellowship with you, for you said in your holy divine word that as often as we do this, we do it in remembrance of you. Yes, Lord. Father, we, we don't ever want to forget what you've done for us on the cross. As we commune with you, Father God, we ask that you will consecrate the cracker, change it. It represents your broken body. Yes, Lord. Change it from its physical form to its spiritual form. And the blood, the juice represents the blood that you shed on Calvary's cross for us. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. And thank the Lord. And we thank Deacon John Lord Jr. for that prayer of consecration. 
of our communion. If you have your cracker, put it in your right hand. That's the hand of authority. This cracker rep represents the body of Jesus that was only needed because man in the Old Testament from Genesis to Malachi could not secure relationship with God in human form. God had to send his son Jesus through the form of a human. Oh, help me Lord. And he had to come here to be with us. The Bible says he walked the dusty roads. He experienced every level of humanity, but he conquered it through the power of God. And the message for us, beloved, all over the world is that the same victory that Jesus had in his flesh, we also have it. So when we go through, it is not just for us. It is for those who are looking at us as believers for direction, for reinforcement, for, for somebody to show them that it can be done, that it will be done. And I would encourage you believers that when we take this bread, we're saying, Lord, that I'm committed to you, not just when things seem whole, but even when I'm going through a broken season where it seems like the things that I'm experiencing in life is falling apart, it's becoming more fragile, but I'm trusting in God because just like Jesus was broken for me, I'm willing to be broken for him. Let us believers across the world eat the body together. Hallelujah. Then the Bible said he took the cup. The cup reflected the New Testament, the new covenant. Under the old covenant, when man did wrong, blood would have to be shed by a animal, a livestock. They would put the animal on the altar. They would empty it of blood, catch it in a basin because uh, that basin, in order for it to be utilized to get man back in relationship with God, blood would have to be shed. And all through the Old Testament, this would happen. And we called it atonement because atonement is just simply broken down in the word atone. But there are two words in that word, at one. So once blood was shed, then God would accept that person back in relationship as though what had happened had never happened before. You know what the Bible declares that when Jesus came, John said he was the perfect lamb of God come to take away the sins of the world. Now, not just your personal sin, he's so big, he took away the sins of the world that anybody who would receive him as Lord, anybody who would ask him to come into their life, anybody who would say, Lord, I want you to be my savior, I want you to be my keeper, and I want to be your servant. The benefit is that whenever you do wrong, if you go to God and confess your sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Believers all over the world, join us together as a community of faith. Oh God, as the nation who loves him, let us drink the blood together. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Lord, we're filled with gratitude we're filled with thanksgiving over the opportunity for us to commune with you through your body, through your blood. We pray, oh God, that you touch every person who has communed with you today with your precious spirit. Bless us in a way that we reflect you and that we commune with you on a regular basis through your word, through prayer, through meditation, through sharing your goodness with so many people. Father, we ask your blessings upon both deacon and deaconess who's helped us today. We thank you all for the musicians, for our church, 
We thank you for every senior, every single, every millennial, every youth, every worker in the vineyard. And we thank you for our partners who joined us today as we salute your body and your blood in this communion. All these blessings we ask in Jesus' precious name. Let every believer across the world and the nation of the city of joy shout amen, amen and amen, amen. Walk in the things of God, believers. Stand strong on the things of God. You have his blood. You are a part, watch this, of the body of Christ. And let the Lord know that he has a body that's lifting him up. If anybody asks you, what is your life's motto? Please tell them from this house to your house that the joy of the Lord, it is our strength. Be blessed.